Jeremiah chapter 1. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, one of the priests who were in Anatoth, in the land of Benjamin. Yahweh's word came to him in the days of Josiah, the son of Amon, the king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, to the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, to the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. Now Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I appointed you. I sanctified you. I have appointed you to a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord, Yahweh, behold, I don't know how to speak, for I am a child. But Yahweh said to me, Don't say I am a child. You must go to whomever I send you, and you must say whatever I command you. Don't be afraid of them, for I will be with you to rescue you, says Yahweh. Then Yahweh stretched out his hand and touched my mouth. Then Yahweh said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Behold, I have today set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to uproot, to tear down, to destroy, to overthrow, to build and to plant. Moreover, Yahweh's word came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? I said, I can see the branch of an almond tree. Then Yahweh said to me, you have seen well, for I watch over my word to perform it. Yahweh's word came to me the second time saying, what do you see? I said, I see a boiling cauldron and it is tipping away from the north. Then Yahweh said to me, out of the north, evil will break out on all the inhabitants of the land. For behold, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, says Yahweh. They will come, and they will each set his throne against the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem, and against all its walls around, and against all the cities of Judah. I will utter my judgments against them concerning all their wickedness, and that they have forsaken me. They have burned incense to other gods, and worshipped the works of their own hands. You, therefore, put your belt on your waist, arise and say to them all that I command you. Don't be dismayed at them lest I dismay you before them. <laughs> For behold, I have made you today a fortified city, an iron pillar and bronze walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against its princes, against its priests, and against the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they will not prevail against you. For I am with you, says Yahweh, to rescue you. So, Jeremiah chapter 1, a whole great new book. Very exciting. And uh, we, right back at the start of the Bible, I said, you know, as we go through book by book by book, I wanted you to consider what was your favorite book. A lot of people, their favorite book is the Psalms. We've just been through Isaiah. That's, that is a favorite book of some people. But some people also find the prophets hard to understand because they don't seem to know who they're talking to and what they're saying and why they're saying it. It just seems to be a lot of words, chapter after chapter, all about judgment. Well, we're going to go through Jeremiah now, and we're going to see, you know, if this is a book that you like is your favorite. But we're also going to start to see that there are differences between Isaiah and Jeremiah. And then there will be differences between Jeremiah and Ezekiel. And we'll start to see that all the prophets are not just the same. They're not all just prophecies of judgment. And they're not all just judgment against Israel. So we're going to learn a bunch of things the more we discover. Now, this started out by saying, these were the words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, one of the priests in Anatoth. So what we learn right up front is that Jeremiah, he's born into a priestly family. That makes him a Levite. And it means that he also either is a priest right now or is going to be a priest. So he's one of the few prophets that's a prophet and a priest, both of them at the same time. That's a bit unusual. So Jeremiah is an unusual guy. Now it says here that his father was called Hilkiah. When we were going through the book of 2 Kings, uh, we met King Josiah. Now King Josiah is the king alive at the time that Jeremiah starts 
his prophetic ministry. And King Josiah was the boy king. You might remember that he was the king, you know, became king at the age of eight. And uh, he was the king that set the money box up outside the temple and people would put the money in to donate money to rebuild and, you know, to refurbish the temple. And he was also the king that when they were, when the priests were active in the temple, they discovered the, the law of the Lord. So I don't know if you remember all of that, but if you go back to our King's videos, we discussed all of that. But basically, Israel had fallen away from the Lord. Things were so bad, they had two bad kings in a row. This was Manasseh and Amon. So this is King Josiah's grandfather and father. And these two kings were so bad, you can't believe it. And they, they Manasseh shut the temple doors. Like he closed it. They were not using the temple anymore. And he filled the temple up with idols. It was used as a storehouse. And um, anyway, in the time of Josiah, Josiah's just a, a boy when he becomes king. And he has a priest in his life called Hilkiah. And this priest is like a guide to Josiah and helps him to become a good king. Well, we discover here in the very first verse of Jeremiah that Jeremiah's father is called Hilkiah. <laughs> so the question is, is the same priest Hilkiah who guided King Josiah to become the last of the good kings, is he the same guy who's the father of Jeremiah? It's not possible to know for 100%. But a lot of the early church fathers, these are people like St. Jerome, who translated the Bible into Latin, and people like Clement of Alexandria, they all believe it's the same guy. So, I mean, I know I like the sound of that. I like the sound to think that, yeah, Jeremiah's father is the same guy that guided King Josiah. And when, if that is the same, it's possible that Jeremiah and King Josiah grew up together as kids. But the Bible doesn't say that. We don't know that for sure. But we do know that Josiah's was guided by a priest called Hilkiah and Jeremiah's father was a priest called Hilkiah and both of them were alive at the same time. So that is very, very interesting. So Josiah becomes a king when he's eight and he, in the 13th year of that king, he, um, he uh, this is when Jeremiah is called. So Josiah is 21 years of age when Jeremiah becomes called to be a prophet. And Jeremiah is born in the very last few years of Manasseh, which means that Jeremiah is going to be very slightly, I think he's very slightly older. Just trying to do the maths in my brain. Yeah. So Jeremiah is probably early 20s. King Josiah is also early 20s. So, and a lot of the commentators suggested he was about 20 years of age. So something like that. Jeremiah's 20, 22, 23. He's somewhere in that range and King Josiah is as well. So it says in here that uh, the Lord said to Jeremiah, before you were born, I called you. Before, you know, in the womb, I anointed you to be a prophet. So the Lord knew from a very, before he was even born, that Jeremiah was called. And uh, the, Lord, the Lord knows each of us before we were born too. There are things about you that the Lord has called you to do, and he put that calling on you before you were born. And, um, but we do what Jeremiah did. And Jeremiah said, don't say that. <laughs> Jeremiah said, I'm too young. I can't be a prophet. And God said, don't say you're too young. Don't say it. And um, now a lot of us, we make excuses for not doing what the Lord wants too. Uh, but we often are not as tuned in to the Lord's opinion on it. So we might find an opportunity comes along in life and it seems like we could go ahead and do something for the Lord, but we don't want to, we don't feel capable, whatever. We don't know that oftentimes the Lord is saying, don't say that, just do what I've put before you. So we need to be people who are seeking the Lord to know his mind and then have a little bit of courage and a little bit of bravery to do it. So Jeremiah says to the Lord, I can't speak, I'm just a child. But <laughs> he's about 20 years of age at least. And so in his mind, you know, he's probably thinking he's not an adult yet until he's like, say, 30 years of age. So he's thinking, I'm just a child. But no, he's 20 
The Lord knew he was capable of speaking, and the Lord made him speak. Now, we've just been going through the book of Isaiah for the last 66 days or so. And Isaiah, his prophecies were in the five, uh, sorry, in the 700s BC, around about 720 through to 680 BC in that whole period was Isaiah. We're now with Jeremiah and we're roughly speaking 100 years in the future from what we've just been speaking. So when Isaiah was the prophet, the big nasty enemy in the world was the Assyrians from Nineveh. But now we've jumped 100 years into the future and the big nasty enemy in the world is the Babylonians. The Assyrians are done for. They don't exist anymore. And so we've now jumped to a completely different time period. And as we start going through the prophecies of Jeremiah, we're going to discover the things that God is saying. It's not, it's not like he's saying the same type of things to the, about the Babylonians as what Isaiah was saying about the Assyrians. No, even the type of things that are said have actually changed. And we're going to see that as we go through. Now, the book of Jeremiah... Or if you were in, you know, a synagogue, the scrolls of Jeremiah, um, these are the, this is the biggest book in the Bible. So the book of Jeremiah only has 52 chapters. Isaiah has 66 chapters and Psalms have, has 150 chapters. So some people say, oh, no, Psalms is the biggest book. No, it's not. It's the biggest book if you count the chapters. But if you count the actual amount of content in the book, Jeremiah is the biggest, it has the most words, because each of the chapters, are, they're big chapters. Whereas the Psalms, you get some really short Psalms. In fact, of the 10, I think I talked about this at one point, of the 10 shortest chapters in the Bible, I think seven or eight of them are in the Psalms. So the Psalms has a lot of chapters, but it's a shorter book than Jeremiah. And Isaiah has more chapters too, 66, but it's also a shorter book than Jeremiah. So we're going to be going through the 52 chapters of Jeremiah, but we're going to discover that um, there's a lot to say, and each of our videos are probably going to be slightly longer than our average video because of that fact. So Jeremiah begins to prophesy during the time of Josiah, the last of the good kings, and then he prophesies through the reign of Josiah's um, three sons, Jehoiachin. Chim, Jehoiachin, and Zedekiah, the last three kings. And the, the period of all of these last couple of kings is, is the time when the Babylonians are coming against Jerusalem over and until they come against them three times until eventually in the third time Jerusalem is completely destroyed. And so that's the background to the book of Jeremiah. It's in the days of the final good king, Josiah, but in, in his days the words coming are warnings. And then it's in the reigns of the last three kings who are all evil. And in the time that all of that happens, the King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon is coming against Jerusalem and Jerusalem is destroyed. So the Lord says to Jeremiah, um, don't say that you are too young. You know, you must speak the words that I put in your mouth. And he says, don't worry, I will be with you. I will rescue you. <laughs> and... Um, one of the commentators I listen to, Dr. Creasy from Logos, he says, he, you know, he, he gets in situation and he pretends that he was Jeremiah and he says, oh, great, that means I'm going to need rescuing. <laughs> so, yes, Jeremiah did need rescuing. As we go through the book of Jeremiah, he needed rescuing a few times. Some nasty, nasty things happened to him. So finally, we get to the second half of the chapter and the Lord gives Jeremiah a couple of tests. He says, what do you see? And Jeremiah says, I can see the branch of an almond tree. And God says, you have seen well, and I'm going to watch over you to make sure my word is in you. And um, so Jeremiah sees something. Now, we don't know whether he sees it with his eyes opened, like I'm looking at the camera right now and looking at the lighting and all of that. Like I can see things with my eyes open. Um, sometimes the Lord gives people visions and they see things with their eyes open that are not physically there, but they see them. I remember my dad once describing he had a vision of the Lord. He's had several appearances of the Lord, but this one particular one, he was in prayer and his eyes were closed and he saw the Lord standing right there. 
and he opened his eyes to get a better look. <laughs> but when he opened his eyes, the Lord wasn't there. When he shut his eyes, the Lord was there again. So there's different types of visions. We don't really know how it was working for Jeremiah. But the Lord asked him, what do you see? And he could see this almond tree. So great, he was seeing accurately. The Lord doesn't only speak with seeing, which could be visions, dreams, or things you see with your eyes open. But the Lord also speaks through hearing. Sometimes you hear things. Um, I once was at the beach um, to, to tell a silly story and um, with kids, and we were playing, and there were these dogs running around. And these dogs were doing the dumbest things. You know, dogs can act so strange. And I just said out loud, dogs are funny. Um, and I heard... As clear as day, I heard a voice say, people are funny too. <laughs> and, uh, well, I just thought that must, that must have been the Lord, right? Well, I heard it. I just heard it. I wasn't expecting to hear anything. So the Lord can speak. You can hear him out loud. But sometimes you just a thought just lodges in your mind and you know you've heard the Lord. But sometimes the thought that comes from the Lord is so faint and it's almost like it's your own thoughts. It's like when you say, oh, Lord, I've lost my keys. You know, help me find my car keys. And then suddenly you, you remember, oh, I've left them in the, you know, I've left them in the room downstairs or something. You just suddenly remember. Well, see, that remembering is very much like your own thoughts, but you just prayed and the Lord reminded you. So sometimes the Lord is really obvious and sometimes it's a lot like your own thoughts. And therefore, sometimes people also make the terrible mistake of assuming that what they think is the Lord's word. And that's a, that's a dangerous place to be. And there are a lot of people who think they're prophetic, but they're not very good at it. And sometimes they just say what they think and not what the Lord thinks. And um, it's nasty stuff. And so here we've got the Lord giving Jeremiah some practice. So the Lord is giving him some practice to make sure he is seeing the Lord accurately. And so the Lord says it to him again. What do you see? And Jeremiah says, I see a pot, a cauldron, tilting forth from the north. So you imagine a, a, a big pot or a cauldron full of boiling water. And then it's tilting forward from the north. Well, the north was symbolic of Babylon. That's where Babylon was. And this was a pot of boiling water or a pot of judgment. It's about to tip out forth on everything south of it, which was Judah, Judah, Jerusalem. And then the Lord says, I will utter my judgments against them concerning all of their wickedness. So then the Lord says to Jeremiah, you know, he tests him with these couple of tests to see, is he receiving from the Lord accurately? And he is. And then the Lord says, I'm going to put my word in you. People are going to fight against you, but they won't prevail against you because I am with you and I'm going to rescue you. So we meet Jeremiah. This chapter would be called the call of Jeremiah, where the Lord's called him. The Lord calls all of us to do things too, but maybe not always as dramatically as this. And Jeremiah knew from the very first moment that it was going to be tough. But he obeyed the Lord, and he's one of the Bible's great characters. You know, we often think of, um, in the Bible, Moses. We think Moses, he's a great character. Or we think of David, or we think of Paul. You know, and of course, Jesus. You know, these are these main characters in the Bible. But aside from Jesus, you've got these three, David, Paul, Moses, Abraham, of course. But there's not a lot written about Abraham. But you've got these three characters that are larger than life. And you know, they wrote so much of the Bible. Moses did. David wrote a lot. And Paul wrote a lot. Luke also wrote a lot of the New Testament. But we don't often remember that Jeremiah has as equally a big part to play. So if you're wanting to pick the top five contributors to the bible you know moses it's moses david luke and paul and jeremiah jeremiah wrote the book of jeremiah he wrote the book of lamentations he wrote the books of first and second kings he contributed one of the biggest chunks to the bible that we have and so what we've got now in jeremiah is one of the key significant bible characters and we see right here in chapter one it starts with him saying yes to the lord even though he knew from day one it was going to be difficult. So, is there difficulties in your future? <laughs> Quite possibly. But uh, the challenge to you and I is to say yes to the Lord, and we're going to follow him no matter what.
Lord, I ask for the grace that was on Jeremiah to be upon us. Lord, we don't want to be weeping prophets. We don't really want to go through all these difficulties, but we do want the grace to be so clear about following you and so aware of what you're saying. Lord, I ask you to bless us with these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.